Yo! Welcome to another episode of Gaming with Your Boy, Mr. C. And today we break down none other than the long anticipated Sony exclusive, The Last of Us 2. Gaming with Mr. C. Gaming with Mr. C. 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 Gaming with Mr. C. Gaming with Mr. C. 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 Gaming with Mr. C. Gaming with Mr. C. 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 Gaming with Mr. C. Gaming with Mr. C. C. So guys, we're gonna start with the story. The story takes place with a 19-year-old Ellen Page. Sorry about that, guys. Legal tells me I have to call her Ellie. Uh, Ellie fight in with the decision that Joel made at the end of The Last of Us 1 when he decided to save her life instead of having the cure for everybody else's life. Now this game does a good juxtaposition of Ellie and Abby. Abby is the scientist's daughter from the first game that Joel kills. So what it breaks, ends up breaking down is you, the game spans across three days. Uh, the first three days you're playing as Ellie and then the, during that same three days you get to go back and play as Abby. And the way that their story intertwines is actually really well done. And I really do enjoy the story overall. My issues with the story really came from the fact of, of them kind of manufacturing emotions or what I felt them manufacturing emotions is they like to introduce characters and kill them all off uh, rather rapidly. And I just feel like that's a cheap way to garner emotion out of the gamer instead of just telling a good story. Now, lengthwise, and we all know length is important, if you know what I mean. So length is, uh, this game took me about 29 hours to beat. Uh, I got 167 out of the 266 collectibles. The game is 11 chapters long. Uh, so if you were to go for 100% or platinum in this game, you are probably looking at double that, maybe 40 to 60 hours, because it is going to take two, maybe three playthroughs. Uh, but for my first playthrough, I think I was very thorough. And like I said, I clocked right at 29 hours. The first half of the game is more open or hub world. Yes, Naughty Dog going open! Uh, but the second half of the game was a little bit more linear, uh, so less to search for items. Graphically, the game, actually, uh, the game looks actually looks really good. I actually played it on the PS4 Pro in 4K, or uh, I don't think it actually meets that standard, but still, uh, for all intents and purposes, the game looks really good. Uh, most of the game is in an open world setting, uh, so you're in Seattle years after Infection Day, so everything's overgrown, hills, collapsing buildings, fallen bridges, overturned trucks. Um, that it's really, it's really wild to see everything so overgrown, but the game's graphics are really in the details. So for instance, if you go to a record store, there's like a Pearl Jam poster on the wall, uh, there's records all over the place really makes you feel like you're in a record store or it looks like a, an apartment was abandoned at the last second with still food on the table or you know a PSP laying on the coffee table those kind of things that kind of really give it that detail and the real life counterparts if you will like the Seattle uh, Seahawks Stadium um, the museum the aquarium all are really well done and matter of fact the aquarium is probably my favorite thing from the game um, it's just missing some of the other things. It's kind of really missing that 4K brightness and that pop and that uh, extra depth that I've come accustomed to from playing games in 4K on the Series X and the PC. Um, the only other really issue I guess I had with the graphics is the texturing uh, took some time to load at times. So the, the blue shirt, uh, the white shirt, is you would see the blue and the white. And then a split second later, you would see the texture, the rips, the cuts, the holes, the blood. Uh, so it just sometimes took a little while uh, to get going. Uh, the details are nice. Like I said, it just really misses that 4K shine that uh, I'm so used to. So it kind of isn't in that upper echelon of games like the Resident Evil remakes, the new Tomb Raiders, and the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But it's just like right there beneath it. So guys, controls and gameplay. Uh, so anybody who's ever played The Last of Us, which I assume most people have, know pretty much what this is all about here. Um, you still have the, you know, shaking for the dead battery, which would have been cool if they did that with, um, like, hey, your controller's dying, you, you know, flashlight, shake the battery, but they don't. But still, it's a cool feature. Uh, the newest thing that I noticed about the game is Joel finally comes through with his promise of teaching Ellie how to play the guitar. And you use this bad boy to storm her up, man. And as you hit the notes right, it kind of auto-plays the song at that point. 
and cuts you into a cutscene or a memory that you get to live out, which wow, was my favorite feature of the game, man. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, my issues with the controls is when you use your supersonic to see where the enemies are, you auto crouch. Uh, the second issue is when you're running, right, and you go to jump that cliff or that edge, uh, sometimes you get stuck in that run animation and you would fall to your untimely death. And that's how I got a few of these bumpers right here. Um, other than that, uh, you know, the controls are pretty tight and, you know, what you would expect from Naughty Dog. Um, as far as Ellie and Abby go, they pretty much play the same. They have the different collectibles. Um, they also have different upgrades, um, which to kind of upgrade everything, you have to play through it more than once. Um, but it's not like one of them's like super stealthy and the other one's like a strong man or does something crazy. Uh, other than that, man, this is the exact controller that I used to play the game with. You can kind of see some of that patina on it. Uh, but guys, let's get into the final thoughts. Come on over this way. All right, guys, so my final thoughts on The Last of Us 2. Overall, I really enjoyed the game. It was a great experience. Um, I just don't think that it kind of hit perfect on every note of the game. For instance, I think that the story could have been a little bit better told and less reliant on the manufactured emotions. I, I think from uh, a gameplay or control standpoint, there was a couple hiccups there, as I stated, with the crouching and the auto jump or the jumping. And then I have some issues with the visual fidelities, uh, but that's more of a complaint, I guess, for the console than it is for the game. Uh, so it does, you know, kind of miss on some of the points. I think it is technically a game that most gamers if not all gamers should play because it was still a really great game uh the first half of the game was a little bit more boring i think um i actually believe it or not preferred playing as abby uh just because it just kind of felt new and refreshed um so overall i'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's not a good game because it is still a really good game i just don't think it is deservant of a perfect score because it does miss on some of those notes so overall, your boy, Mr. C, is going to give that bad boy a 9.25.